Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Of Monsters and Men, titled Beneath the Skin. I did not expect to get as many requests to cover this album as I got. And on some level, that's exciting for me, because it meant that Icelandic band Of Monsters and Men had somehow managed to make an impact in popular culture beyond just little talks. The song that somehow managed to chart just high enough to lodge a place on the pop charts in 2013, two years after it was actually released. And I'll admit, it was off of that song that I dug into their pretty damn solid debut album, My Head is an Animal. Now, to put things in perspective, the reason that Little Talks did so well was because of A Monsters and Men, they had very fortuitous timing. The folk boom was kicking into gear, at least before it fizzled out, and they had the benefit of a horn section, potent melodic grooves, and interweaving male and female vocals to stand out from the crowd, and especially from Mumford & Sons, who were leading that boom. Of course, the huge benefit of Monsters and Men they also had was a windswept, haunted swell to their production that was very unique, some noisier electric guitars that never compromised the texture and pretty damn solid technical songwriting that wasn't afraid to get weird in terms of a more feral brand of poetry if that makes any sense or put it another way there's a reason why little talks just ran away as my favorite hit song of 2013 because it's goddamn amazing so okay why haven't i been jumping all over their sophomore release or reviewed it last week well part of it was a certain amount of trepidation i was initially wild about their opening singles and early buzz to this record wasn't great especially emphasizing that the album reportedly had more filler not a good sign this was a concern for me because if i were to level one big complaint on their debut album it'd be that their sound can have a certain uniformity to it if the songwriting or the melodies don't really stand out from the pack. Not a bad sound by any stretch of the mind, but it can become a little bit repetitive upon frequent listens. But look, I still really like this band, so I dug into their sophomore album Beneath the Skin. Was it better than expected? Well, on some levels, it is exactly what I expected. A Monsters and Men mostly stuck to what worked for them and delivered a pretty damn solid record at first glance. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you quickly start to realize that the album, while still being good, doesn't quite have the same impact as my head is an animal the band themselves has said this is them opting for more subtlety reeling things back a little bit and focusing more on their humanity instead of the grandiose wildness of their debut album and while i can definitely see that intention it doesn't quite execute as well as they might think at least for me which leads for a record that is good but i'm sorry not quite their best a little bit of a step back so okay to start if you're familiar with the monsters and men you'll find that their sound hasn't changed all that much thick acoustic grooves and deep rollicking percussion driving the tracks the melodies either they're being driven by washed out guitar lines or from the horn section, which add to the background texture but are never mixed solo to be lost in the mix. In other words, balanced right. If you're going to notice a shift in the sound from their debut, it would come in some of the production, specifically the usage of reverb. There's always been a wild, rickety, almost ramshackle emptiness that characterized my head as an animal that had a lot of rough edge texture that I really liked. Beneath the Skin has some of that, but thanks to the production work of Rick Costi, the guitars have more thickness and chugging swell, and the mix is a little bit more dense, less reminiscent of a wild, empty expanse or tundra and more like an eerie cavern, which does do a fair bit to favor the guitars, but not quite so well for the horns, which don't quite have the same explosive color they'd had in their debut. In other words, it does feel a little bit more traditional conventional, which has spurred comparisons to a band like the XX, especially considering that a Monsters and Men have eased back a little bit more of their pounding cacophonous power that drove their debut in favor of a little bit more restraint. Now, to me, this is a bit of a mixed blessing. Yes, it does give the album more of a sense of intimacy, but it takes away one of the band's most distinctive elements and a lot of their real power for me. Now that's not saying that there aren't some great melodies on this album. The creeping, washed out tones of human, the instantly memorable chorus of crystals, the interplay between the fluttering background tones and subtler keyboards in the chorus of Empire, that darker snarl of slow life, especially with that bass line, the shimmering swell of Eye of the Storm extended with these glistening pianos, especially when those pianos came back on a reappearance on We Sync, probably my favorite song on this album. But there isn't the same sense of intensity intensity and climax, and there are several moments where the band seems to be actually holding back from really cutting loose, which was a disappointment for me, especially on killer crescendos like Thousand Eyes that really could have exploded so well and just doesn't happen. And this also extends to the vocals as well. One thing's for sure, you can definitely tell that female lead singer Nana Brindis Hilsmer daughter has been listening to a fair share of the most recent Bjork album, Volnacura, especially on the delicate, quieter songs, as their vocal inflection isn't far removed from each other. And to some extent, that makes a lot of sense. Volnacura was a powerful and very intimate record. There's a lot of parallels. The problem is 
that neither her or her male counterpart have quite the emotive range to pull this off. They are Bjork. And the added reverb accenting their vocals didn't help matters. There's all the more exasperating is that the band doesn't make more usage of the male-female dichotomy that drives more interesting songwriting. The dual roles they played on Little Toss are some of the most thrilling and unique parts of that song, some of the stuff I like the most. And it just strikes me as a bit of a wasted opportunity. You don't see more of it here. But then again, that wouldn't quite fall in line with the lyrics and themes of this record, which have a very potent and very individual focus. The bands have described Beneath the Skin as a more intimately human album, tapping deeper into vulnerability that's more uncomfortable to express. In other words, very much like Bjork. And there's definitely an arc to this album, a record that begins in loss and fear and confronting an unfriendly world that might seek to change them. Relationships for all the wrong reasons, fears that might prove completely groundless. In other words, being chased by wolves without teeth. And I do like the broad thematic arc of this album and embracing that vulnerability. Those fearful elements held beneath the skin and buried deep that the band just dives through the storm in order to fight them, only to just accept them and show no fear in placing them in plain daylight for all of us to see. There's still uncertainty in how the world might respond and accept them, especially in a world characterized by empty riches and platitudes on crystals, or the neon throne on human, or in the bluntest lyric on this record in Eye of the Storm, are you really gonna love me when I'm gone? I fear you won't. I fear you don't. But this is arguably where we run into the biggest problem with this album, and it comes down to some of the writing. The intentions of this band was to create a more intimate, more vulnerable, and personal record. And you can definitely see this in their themes, their delivery, and their presentation instrumentally. But in terms of the actual language used in the lyrics, it doesn't really connect in the same way. And it's because of Monsters and Men have a very distinctive style of writing. They have a lot of personality here. Layered metaphors and symbolism, lyrics loaded with animalistic imagery that evoke bigger, more abstract scenes out of nature, which can feel like a bit of an odd fit for a record diving into personal demons. The writing style is better suited for epic adventure than internal drama. And what it means is that connecting to those smaller emotions that demand more subtlety kind of misses the mark for me. And what's frustrating is that this could have worked better if the writing was a tad more visceral or hard hitting, a shade more graphic to show off the real intensity of those fears. But then again, none of the instrumentation goes in that intense direction either, so I'm not entirely surprised that the lyrics kind of missed the mark here. But let me make this clear. I do like Beneath the Skin by Up Monsters and Men. Compositionally, the band is playing in a comfortable wheelhouse, and they still got a knack for writing very solid songs. But from the aborted climaxes to the lack of lyrical intensity and its human connection, I feel a little bit distant from this album as well. I can respect them pulling back to a more personal story and using their own brand of abstract writing to do so, but it doesn't quite connect as strongly as I'd like, even though I can wholly admit that some people who like some of this writing might find it a lot better. I'm feeling for me a light 7 out of 10, and definitely a recommendation to fans of the band, but I'm hesitant to go beyond that. If My Head is an Animal didn't win you over on Of Monsters and Men, this will only connect if you're looking for a sound that's a little bit more reserved and held back. As for me, I think I just prefer the monsters. Just saying. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Just to let all let you know, my two-year anniversary is coming up, and as I said in my last video, I'm still taking requests for what I'm going to be covering on that two-year anniversary, which will be an album released in 2014. Could have already covered it, could be a new album. Leave your suggestions in the comments with the date attached that it's a 2014 request, and I'll add it to the tally. The one that gets the most tallies wins. You try to spam the system, I will know and I will catch you. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.